You ready? He grabbed that right there. <laughs> Are you ready? Hey. Is you ready? Ready? You say you ready? Oh. Whole squad ready? Ready? Is you ready? Huh? Are you ready? Ready? Is you ready? Whole squad hey. ready? We came here to see Jeff. What you got? Oh. Tasked with Don's Insiders, and I'm joined by Clippers guard Tremaine Isabel. Devontae Kaycock of the Los Angeles Lakers, 3x3 U alum. I'm joined by Isaiah Pinheiro. Tonius Cleveland, uh, who's playing in the NBA Summer League for the Mavericks. Timberwolves guard Kenyon Berry. Galen Robinson. Robert Carter Jr. I'm going to the top. Uh, are you ready? You know what time it is, right? They don't want us to make it, so it's time to take it. Rhyme with them killers, the time to see who be real. I load it, empty the clip on them, make sure these people feel it. I'm shooting like Reggie Miller, don't move or I'ma hit you. Pop a pound, told the toe, yeah, I call it Thriller Manila. Hey. Scope on them, be no motion picture, hit you from distance. We came out the trenches with the stitches, God is my witness. Yeah. And I gotta get that first shot up before that bullet hit me. I ain't gotta worry about looking back with my squad with me. No. Are you ready? Hey. Is you ready? Ready? You say you ready? Oh. Whole squad ready? Ready? Is you ready? Go. Are you ready? Ready? Is you ready? Whole squad ready. We came here to see Jeff. What you got? How's it going, everyone? No, Teddy no, Solomon no. here with Don's Insiders. I'm here at the Wynn Hotel. We got a waterfall behind us. We're here in Las Vegas, and I'm here with a very special guest, Canyon Barry. Canyon, how are you doing today? Good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, so. We're going to talk a little bit about your college career, a little bit about the summer league, and uh, what you have going basketball-wise, if that's all right. Sounds good. So uh, you started out at the College of Charleston. Uh, what originally drew you to that school? And we know you transferred out, but what originally uh, attracted you to it? Yeah, so um, I wasn't highly recruited coming out of high school. I only had a couple offers. Um, at the time, the head coach of the school was Bobby Kremens. Um, he was just a great head coach, obviously, and he had uh, ties to my family. He coached two of my brothers at Georgia Tech, so had the connection there, went down, took a visit, absolutely fell in love with the school, the campus, the people, and uh, really, really loved my time at Charleston. It was a tough decision to transfer out. Um, great four years there. Was able to graduate, get my degree, and then uh, moved on to Florida. Yeah, so then you decided to go to Florida after that, more of a high major school rather than mid major. Uh, what made you want to go there? What did you like about that environment? Uh, yeah, so again, tough decision to transfer Charleston. I love that school, the coach, the players, the, the city. Um, but I felt that for my basketball career, the move to Florida was the best thing. Um, obviously, like you said, it's a high major school, get to play on national television a lot, got a chance to, to play in the NCAA tournament. And then also part of it was academic wise, they had a, uh, a grad program that I was really interested in. I just finished up my master's in nuclear engineering um, from their engineering school. So. Uh, it was a great opportunity. I was blessed to be able to play basketball there. Loved Florida, loved the Gators. It was a great fan base. The, the atmosphere at all the games was unbelievable. And we made a, a deep run in the tournament, made it to the Elite Eight. So couldn't ask for a, a better transfer experience. Definitely. So talking about the Colonial with Charleston, uh, we've been talking to some guys like Devontae Kaycook, uh, yeah. Justin Wright Foreman, yeah. uh, Jarrell Brantley. All these guys have been able to come out of the Colonial and become professional players now uh, do you think that's a special conference really the colonial do you think it's unique because it seems like that conference specifically has been putting out the most mid-major professionals at least this year um, definitely you know I think the colonial is one of those underrated conferences where it's tough year in year out you know it's usually a one big league but um, they have great players there you know JB I played with him for a year he's, he's one of my guys unbelievable player I think he's you know developed immensely from his freshman year he's an unbelievable player right now looks really good in the summer league so I think the Colonial is definitely one with great coaches and great players and gotta keep an eye on it yeah and we asked Devante we said uh, do you think it's easier to become a professional player as a standout on a mid-major team or as kind of one of the guys in the background on a high major team do you have any opinion on that um, you know, I think it can go either way. I think it just depends on the player. Obviously, if you're a star at the mid-major, you're going to get the looks, but everyone kind of questions, okay, could he have done that at a high-major school? Whereas if you're at a high-major school and you're kind of in the background, you know, you could get kind of breezed over or looked over. So I think you just got to find the spot that fits best with you and find a coach who believes in you and can give you the opportunities you need to showcase your talents. Definitely. And so you're very well known for your free throw style, just like your father, Rick Barry. Uh, have you been shooting that way your entire life, your free throws? Um, I learned the form at a very young age. You know, my dad taught me with a smaller ball on a mini hoop, but I didn't actually make the switch until junior year in high school. I um, wanted to get a couple seasons under my belt and just 
get used to the technique and then obviously shot it all through college and continue to shoot it now and do it at a pretty good rate I like yeah. to think so uh, you know I encourage people who are bad free throw shooters to, to take a look at switching you know I think uh, Shanayu Ogwander a uh, big guy from Louisville who played in the league now or G League for a while has switched and his percentage went up so um, yeah great shot yeah so you shoot eight, you shot 88% from the line in your senior year at Florida uh, so do you do you think off the court have you ever tried like taking threes taking other shots with that style obviously you can't do it on the court because it will get blocked but would you be a high percentage shooter um yeah i don't know like you said uh, it's not really a, a in-game shot other than the yeah. free throw but i'm pretty automatic from half court underhanded you know it's, oh, wow. it's a great way great horse shot great pig shot so yeah so what are your plans for the future now you're obviously in the summer league you've pretty much done it all playing mid major high major g league summer league what are your plans for the future does it involve basketball or do you think you may be doing something else you said you just got your masters uh definitely you know i want to play basketball as long as i can obviously the goal is to make the nba so uh summer league is a good stepping stone for that we'll see if i can you know make a training camp after this and see what the future holds i'm also doing uh three on three basketball with usa we were just actually over in uh, Amsterdam for the World Cup so three on three is an Olympic sport in Tokyo 2020 so that was a great experience to represent our country and it was actually the first time the men have won gold in three on three so that was a pleasure so I'm gonna be doing a lot more of that this summer after summer league and then see what the future holds definitely we were covering 3x3 you I don't know if you know about yeah, that yeah, all yeah. the seniors yeah 3x3 three 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 you yeah too. the colonial yeah. won that so do you think three on three could be the future of basketball it really seems up and coming at this uh, point it's definitely up and coming you know i think obviously five on five will always hold the majority of yeah. share and interest but i think three on three definitely has a place in the united states and growing popularity it's super fun to watch quick fast paced 10 minute games and i think obviously with the olympics coming up in 2020 that's going to make it even more popular definitely well thanks so much for talking to me we're going to pass it over to sam for part two of this yeah, interview no but thanks a lot hello everybody i'm sam pasco with dawn's insiders and i'm joined by timberwolf timberwolves guard Canyon Barry Canyon thanks for taking the time thank you man good to be here yeah uh, we just talked to Teddy he talked to you about your kind of your experience overall can you just recap that your kind of your origins of basketball with your Hall of Fame dad yeah um, you know just grew up around the game obviously I have four brothers who played in the NBA my dad top 50 Hall of Famer my mom was actually a good player in her own right at William and Mary so just grew up around the game and was blessed to have a basketball family and learn from some great teachers uh, for someone that hasn't seen you play, well, you, they, they seem to free throw. That's something very unique. How would you describe your overall style of play? Um, you know, I kind of try to be a jack of all trades. I like to be able to get to the rim, finish around the hoop, obviously try to get fouled, make free throws at a high percentage, and then yeah. shoot the three ball pretty well too. Mm -hmm. And now transitioning over to why we're here in beautiful Las Vegas. Uh, the NBA Summer League. What's your experience been like so far? Um, it's been great. You know, competition level's high. You get to go to training camp and work out with the guys at the facility in Minnesota, which was which was awesome. And, you know, we're 3-0 so far, so it's been a great experience looking to just kind of showcase everyone's talent and hopefully keep winning some games. Mm -hmm. And can you maybe take us a little behind the scenes? What's an average day like for you as a player? Yeah, for sure. Um, so on a game day, you'll get up probably, you know, 8.39. Uh, we're lucky that the Timberwolves organization provides breakfast. So get to save some of that per diem here in Vegas. Um, and then after that, we usually have like a, a walkthrough in the hotel where we'll do some scouting, watch some video, go over personnel, head to the game. You know, the games here are at various times, super early or super late. So we've had a couple two o'clock games. So get to the game, you kind of got to warm up behind the bleachers a little bit because right, obviously yeah. it's game by game by game. Kinda they like only give you exactly yeah. little AAU style action. They only give you 10 minutes on the court. So get ready to go, get out on the court, hopefully, you know, get a win. And then afterwards, you're kind of free, eat some dinner and start doing some treatment and recovery and rinse and repeat. Uh, you mentioned breakfast real quick. I got to ask, pancakes or waffles? I'm a waffle guy, man. Real? Okay. Big waffle All guy. Right. All right. Um, I also want to mention, uh, back to the game aspect here, uh, your approach in these games. Are you trying to really stand out? You've had some professional experience before, so there is footage on you from the scouts. But what's your approach now? Um, yeah, obviously I think it's important that you don't try to play outside your game. Like you said, the scouts have been watching you in college and pros, they know your game. So if you start trying to, to do stuff that you haven't practiced or kind of show a different side of you, I think that can kind of backfire. I think the most important thing is to just be yourself, play your game, and play the game the right way, you know? Um, they know everyone's trying to showcase themselves, but that can lead to some, some kind of selfish play, and I don't think that's what anyone wants to, to see. They want you to know that you play the game the right way and understand your role. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the teammates not trying not to be selfish. What's it like adjusting to a new team and 
kind of learning all these players? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not as bad as people think. Obviously, you haven't really played with any of these guys before, but at the end of the day, you're all pro basketball players, and you've played a lot of basketball, so you understand the game, and you have that in common. And once you get out there and go through training camp and play a couple of games, you start to click. And now I want to kind of finish with some personal interest questions here. Yeah, What's sure. your go-to shoe on and off the court? Man, I'm a big flip-flop guy. You know, I come from Florida, so anytime I can wear slides, head to the beach, that's my kind of weather. Nice. And what is your favorite mu- musical artist? Do you have a favorite type of music? Oof. You know, I've been on kind of a, a Queen kick lately oh. after uh, oh. Bohemian Rhapsody, nice. so uh, I've been listening to a lot of Queen. Yeah. And what's your favorite movie and TV show? Oof. That's a tough one. Um, TV show, I've been watching a lot of Entourage. Oh, nice. Uh, it's yeah. a classic, you know, you can just kind of throw it on in the background and chill too. Uh, excited to watch the new season of Stranger Things, though. I yeah. think that just came out on Netflix, so I got to get on that. But I don't think I can pick a movie, man. There's too, no many, movie? too many good ones. Yeah. There's too many good ones. Uh, do you like The Hangover? We are in Vegas here, I got to mention. Uh, I have seen it. Hilarious. Great movie, for sure. It's a classic. All right, thank you so much yeah, for man, joining no us, problem. Canyon. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Get the memo. I do not stay at the Intercontinental. And anything I got is not a rental. I own that motherfucker. Figure it out the shit. Is- All right, everybody. I'm Sam Pasco with Dawn's Insiders. I'm here with Devontae Kaycock of the Los Angeles Lakers. Devontae, thanks for taking a walk with us today. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Uh, we're out here at Las Vegas, you know, for the summer league. How you liking Vegas so far? Uh, it's been pretty cool. It's not, I've noticed it's a really big party city and uh, I'm not really too much of a party here but it's been nice uh, being able to first, this is my first time actually being here and uh, just being able to play in summer league it's a, it's a dream come true basically for me. No uh, David Copperfield? No uh, no shows for you tonight? Nah, no shows for me. Yeah. Alright, so I guess we'll start with kind of your start playing basketball. When did you first start? When did you first pick up the basketball? Uh, I didn't really start playing basketball until about 8th grade in middle school. And uh, when I first started, it was pretty bad. Like, I wasn't, I was nowhere near as good as I am now. But it just took a lot of hard work and time and putting effort into it, and it progressively got to me where I am today. And then transitioning into high school, were you just a dominant player then? I mean, you're just a force now. What was it like, kind of developing as a youth uh, AAU player? Uh, it took time as well. Uh, it took a lot of hard work, putting in the time to do better and stuff like that. But in high school, I, I was pretty. Um, pretty well known a little bit and just try to play as hard as I could and do as much as I could for my team as I do now mm-hmm. and uh, but high school days were pretty fun and it got me to Wilmington which got me to here mm-hmm. and then college how would you describe your style of play you mentioned you kind of d- developed as a player what for someone that hasn't seen you play yet how would you describe your game uh, I would describe my game as a rebounder a hard worker uh, gonna do as much as he can to help his team to get more possessions I'll be the first one to dive on the floor, first one in the gym, last one to lead, and uh, just an overall good person. And then we are we are here for Vegas for the summer league. What's your experience been like so far? Meeting the guys, meeting the team, the coaches. What's your experience? How have you liked it so far? Uh, my experience has been great. Uh, being able to play in front of LeBron, he's been to our games, he's been yeah. our practices. It's been a crazy experience for me, and just being able to play in front of all these people and basically try to make a name for myself. That's been the plan and. It's been great. Uh, I've been trying as hard as I can, and it's been, it's been going pretty good so far. Mm-hmm. And you can just maybe take our watchers through. Kind of, what's an average day like for you? It's kind of, kind of closed off at the arena. What, what's the inside scoop? What do you do on an average day? Uh, game day, or regular day. Game day. Game day, basically. Um, wake up, get breakfast, rest a little bit. Uh, go to pregame meal, rest a little bit, watch some movies, chill meditate a little bit, just get my mind relaxed, and then just go out there and play. I was going to mention this later, but you did mention movies. What is your favorite uh, movie? Uh, favorite movie? I don't really know. I do have a couple shows I like. I like Power. Um, Stranger Things just came out, uh-huh. so that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, what else I got? 
There's a couple shows I like to watch, but nothing too good. Nice. And then back to the Summer League. With these games, they're, they're very limited, you know, even for teams that make it to the championship. It's only so many games. What's your approach coming into these? Are you trying to really be aggressive and stand out, or are you trying to just stick to your game? I try to stick to my game, and I feel like that's been the most effective thing for me. That's been able to kind of get my name out there. And then um, us being able to play in the California uh, Cup, I feel like helped me as well. Oh, yeah. Just playing. We got three extra games, so... That was pretty good and fun to do that, but it's, it's just been a fun experience for me. Mm -hmm. And you did mention the extra three extra games, so I'm sure you've got to meet you guys a little bit more, but what, what's the adjustment period like playing with all new teammates from all different backgrounds? Yeah, it definitely took some time being able to meet with my teammates, getting to know them better for everybody, uh, just being able to figure out what each person likes to do differently and getting to know each other. And, but it's been, it's been a great experience. Uh, these last couple of days, we've gotten closer and closer. we bonded more. And uh, these teammates have become family to me. Mm -hmm. And then I want to talk a little bit about your future on the Lakers here. It looks like Showtime has returned in Los Angeles. It looks like a lot of media coverage, even with the Clippers there. How excited are you to be a part of this Lakers team going forward? Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I'm ready for it. Continue to make an impact as much as I can. And just playing hard. But being, being able to be a part of it is... It's crazy. It's a dream come true, and it's going to be a fun battle between the L.A.s, and it's going to be a great ride. And uh, star player LeBron James is going to be on the Lakers, going to be your teammate. Uh, you mentioned you kind of looked up to him, but it was kind of a little rocky journey first. You didn't like him, now you kind of do. What, what's, how do you feel about LeBron James? I definitely always liked him, but he really, he really got me when he just takes over games, and he's just a great player. He's one of the best in the game. And um, I definitely respect his game. I respect his work ethic and just everything he does. He's a great player, and not on accident. He's, he's a great player because of everything he's put into it. Mm -hmm. And the Lakers are obviously going to have some expectations, possibly dethrone the Warriors as the next great dynasty. How do you deal with those expectations? Do you look at the media, what they're saying, or do you just kind of focus on yourself? Uh, I kind of do see it as just something that's a part of our culture now, with social media and all that. But I feel like just tuning it out and going out there and playing on the court, giving everything you've got, it's the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to young players out there trying to emulate your game? You've obviously had a lot of success. What would you say kind of the key thing that's really separated you and been able to uh, be on the Lakers? Uh, I would tell anybody that's younger to whatever you do, don't stop working. Don't let other people tell you what you can't do. Uh, there's no, always going to be doubters. There's always going to be people that don't think you can do it. But as long as you work hard and you keep doing what you can do and you give it everything you got, you can do anything that you want. <laughs> And I wanted to last mention here, the 3x3U tournament. You were a part of that. That's a very unique thing now, three-on-three -three basketball. It's going to be in the Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo and Ice Cube's Big Three League. Yeah. What have you thought about kind of three-on-three -three and that brand of basketball? Three-on-three uh, -three is definitely different. Uh, when I first got out there, they had to explain the rules to us, and it's a lot more tiring than people would think. But three-on-three -three basketball is a fun adjustment for me and my teammates that played in three-on-three. And uh, for us to be able to come out with a win and win the whole thing this year, it was a great experience and we learned a lot from each other. Well, Devontae, thanks for taking a walk with us here in Vegas. We wish you the best of luck going forward. No problem. Thank you, guys. How's it going, everyone? Teddy Solomon here with Don's Insiders, and I'm here with Devontae Kaycock of the L.A. Lakers, star forward in the NBA Summer League here live in Vegas. How are you doing today? Doing good. So uh, we're going to be talking about Devontae's college career, uh, his experience in 3x3U, and also uh, his experience yes. thus far in the Summer League. So you've been kind of the breakout player in the Summer League for a lot of people. You uh, started out, I think you scored 17 in your first game, and you've been scoring double digits in a lot of games in the Summer League. What has this been like, uh, and what do you attribute this success to? Uh, it's been fun. It's been a, a crazy experience for me just being able to play in the Summer League. Um, after years, I remember when I first started playing basketball, I started watching it. And for me to be playing in it, it's been crazy, but it's been fun. I've just been trying to play as hard as I can, make an impact on the court, and I just have fun. I'm an energy guy. I do a lot of the dirty stuff and rebound and play hard and hustle, and I just really want to show that out there. And how does the athleticism of the players you're going up against compare to what you experienced in college? I feel like I've definitely played similar players that are um, – bigger than me and maybe uh, stronger than me, but I feel like my athleticism really sets me apart. And um, just my motor and playing hard, I feel like all of that is a skill for me, and I just use that to my advantage against other players. 
So you come from a small program, UNC Wilmington, and a small conference. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys had success at times in college and had some down points while you were in college. But uh, you stayed all four years. You stayed through college. Were you always planning to graduate college rather than going to play professionally earlier? And what was it about UNC Wilmington that attracted you to the school? Um, yeah, I was definitely planning on staying for all four years, get my education. Um, my mother, she's proud of that on me and telling me like that's something that nobody could ever take away from me no matter what. If basketball starts bouncing, I'll have that. So that was always a plan. And then uh, Wilmington, uh, that got me there was Coach Kevin Keyes. He got me there, um, trusting his process. And it was fun. We had a good uh, season, went to the NCAA tournament uh, years back, two years back to back. And I felt like Wilmington was just the best spot for me. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like staying there was going to be more beneficial than uh, negative for me. So I stayed there, finished it out. Um, it wasn't the best ending that I wanted, but it was good. We did as much as we could. I gave it everything that I had, and Wilmington would always be a part of me. And did you ever consider transferring to a high major school, or did you always want to stay at Wilmington? You thought that was the best place for you? Uh, it crossed my mind, for sure, especially when Kevin Keats left. Uh, that was kind of an opportunity to leave, but I feel like staying in Wilmington was just the best for me. Uh, like going up, I would have to sit out a year. It would have been a lot of things happened in one year. So I felt like just staying there was just going to be the best thing for me. And kind of moving on over to 3x3U, you played in the 3x3U National Championships uh, this past season uh, with other graduating seniors around the country, uh, and you won it with the Colonial Athletic Conference. What was that experience like for you? That was, uh, that was fun. Uh, being able to play with a good group of guys that I've been playing against the last four years in college and us coming together to be a team was uh, it was it was fun. Uh, we got to know each other a lot better. We're basically brothers now. We talk very frequently, and I uh, just see all of us being successful out now after college. It's just uh, it's a blessing for all of us, and uh, it's been fun. And there are 26 3x3U alums that are playing in the summer league. What has it been like to have those guys around you? I know uh, they're obviously not all on your team. Like A lot of them are on the Utah Jazz, but what has that experience been like seeing all these guys in the summer league? Oh, it's been great. Like I said, it's a blessing for us to all be here after graduating and playing in 3x3 together and now being basically brothers. It's just a great experience for all of us. We're all blessed. We're all grateful. Um, we kind of play with a chip on our shoulder because we come from mid-major school. And we basically have a lot to prove to ourselves and prove to the world that no matter what school that you're at, you can still make an impact in the NBA. So we just pride ourselves on that. And then, uh, so in the finals, you were playing for $100,000, probably very stressful. What was going through your mind when you guys were going against the WCC there, a really talented team with Olin Carter, Isaiah Pinheiro, Frankie Ferrari, all guys that probably have professional careers ahead of them? Uh, we just came in and knew we had a game to play. Uh, we took it, that game as we did all out, the rest of them. We didn't lose a game. Uh, we were pretty confident in ourselves, and uh, it was just a well-played game by each and every one of us. We all did our part as we did in all the other games in three on three, and uh, we just kept playing. It was fun, um, and it was just a good way to come out. Great. Thanks so much for talking to us. I'm Teddy Solomon with Don's Insiders. Century, doing something mean to it, do it better than anybody you ever seen. Do it, screams from the haters, got a nice ring to it. I guess every superhero need his theme music. No one man should have all that power. The clock's ticking, I just count the hours. Stop tripping, I'm tripping off the power. How's it going, everyone? Teddy Solomon here with Don's Insiders. I'm here live in Las Vegas. We have a very special guest. I'm here with Galen Robinson. How are you doing today? Uh, blessed. Blessed to be with uh, the, these big-time guys here. <laughs> it's great to have you. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about your college career, you as a player, and how the Summer League has treated you so far. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, we know you committed to Houston, had a lot of other offers, and Houston was kind of, at that point, not a huge program. Coming off of a losing season, I think, you guys were 13, 13 and 22 or something? 13, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the year before. Whoa. Yeah, so you committed to Houston. What was it about Houston that really attracted you? Um, I cannot, yeah. um, personally, uh, Coach Samson and I, he, we just had a different kind of relationship. And um, I felt like every time he talked to me when he was recruiting me, I learned something. 
you know, he's a long-winded guy. So, um, you know, he, he would tell me stories, and when he's telling you stories, um, he has the ability to just grasp your attention and just grab your imagination and just take it for a ride. So, um, you know, he's, I could just tell he was a teacher, and uh, he told me I was going to have to earn everything. So, um, I, and here I am. Yeah, for sure. And you were a part of a big rebuild for Houston. Yeah. You guys went deep into the tournament. Uh, and you had a lot of a lot of winning seasons, 20 win seasons, yeah. four years in a row. Uh, what was that like for you, and how gratifying was it? Um, as a Houston kid, uh, you can't really put a price tag on it because that's my hometown, born and raised there. And um, no, no matter where I play, I always go back home to Houston. And um, to be able to walk around and, and be associated with success and winning and restoring you know, the, the historic value to Houston basketball, um, is I can't put a price tag on it. I'm just blessed to be a part of it. For sure, and we've been talking to a lot of four-year guys, uh, guys who went all the way through college, graduated, even if they could have maybe gone overseas and played professionally. What was it that made you really want to stay in college and finish out that college experience? Um, quite frankly, I wasn't good enough. Um, it was just a lot of stuff that I, I had to work on. Um, I had a lot of, had a couple of injuries here and there that uh, that set me back. But I mean, uh, without those injuries, I wouldn't be the person. I wouldn't have learned what I learned if it wasn't for, the, for those injuries. So um, I, I believe that everything happens for a reason, and um, I'm just I'm just here on my path uh, that God gave me. Definitely. And at Houston, were you able to achieve your goals? We know you went pretty deep in the tournament. Had a had a tough loss in your kind of peak year. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Poole actually in the summer league right yeah. now. And uh, but did you achieve your goals there? Really? Uh, yeah. Um, when I went when I went to Houston, I just wanted to to bring Houston basketball back to national relevance, and um, we just we just came off a season where we won 33 games, and we went to the Sweet 16, and we lo had a heartbreaking loss to Kentucky. We should have won that game, but we didn't. So I mean, um, I did everything that I set out to do, and um, it's 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 paid dividends so far. Yeah, and in the summer league uh, so far, how has it treated you? Have you enjoyed the experience? Has it been all that you dreamed it would be? Uh, crazy thing is, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun because personally, if, if it was up to other people, I wouldn't even be here. So I'm just blessed to even be in this position, let alone playing with such a, a great organiz organization such as the Spurs. Um, they're well-respected and uh, they have great culture, great values, and um, that's, that's the kind of guy I am. And how meaningful is it for you to be playing for a Texas team? Does that mean a lot to uh, you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, it's right up the street. And, um, you know, that G League team is in Austin, which is – I love Austin. So, I mean, you can't – it's it's a really nice it's a real it's, it's just a blessing to be honest it's, mm -hmm. it's a blessing and then last question just being kind of a smaller guard in the context of the summer league what's yeah. it like playing with these big athletic guys guys who are six foot eight maybe yeah. who are playing these same positions at times um it's always a challenge but i feel like my my biggest um the one thing that can't be measured is your heart and i feel like my heart is that's what has gotten me here so i feel like i just play with such a great passion great fire great intensity and um, that usually helps because a lot of guys, you know, they, they might have the talent, but they don't have the, the heart or the, the desire. So um, I feel like in that, in that aspect, that's, that's how I level the playing field. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for joining me right now. We're going to pass you over to Sam for some personal interest yeah. questions, but we really appreciate you appreciate being you, here. Bro. All right. Thanks, Teddy. We got some personal interest questions here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start off here with shoes. Every basketball player needs them. They wear yeah. them. What do you wear on the court and what's your go-to off the court as well? Um, See me, I'm a laid back kind of guy. Off the court, I usually wear my slides, but um, the most comfortable shoes that, that I've worn are Yeezys. Uh -huh. Like they're, they're, they're crazy. But uh, on the court, I, I like the Kyrie just because they you can just tie them real tight and they got just great grip and it's great angle support. I, I like the Kyrie's. <laughs> Uh, music, what do you what do you listen to? What type of music do you like? You like Old Town Road? That's like, been a phenomenal. Yeah, I like playlist. Old Town Road. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely timeless. But <laughs> on my pregame playlist, got a little bit of Drake, a lot of Future, a lot of Meek, but Future. Future, future. get me over the hump, for sure. And let's talk, uh, favorite TV show or movie? Favorite TV show, NBA TV, uh, ESP, slash ESPN. Favorite movie, Lion King. You know, I'm a... I'm a, I'm a eh, and the Incredibles, the Incredibles, the Incredibles, oh, yes. is crazy. I mean, Incredibles is crazy. You looking forward to the Lion King? Uh, yeah, the Lion I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, it's, it's coming out the 18th, and I think I leave the 19th, but I'm seeing that mug out it. here. Oh, yeah, a voice sure. cast, Beyonce, for sure. Yeah, for sure, that. I need that. Um, food. What's your go-to breakfast food? Pancakes or waffles? So, uh, I'm a pancake kind of guy. Oh, yeah. Pancake, fluff, uh, crispy around the edges, fluffy in the middle. Like like that's like I hop a little fluffy like you or like a Denny's. No, nah, see I, I I make them how I like them. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. I, I hop I hop don't do them like I do them. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and then for lunch, what do you got for lunch? You going a little pizza, a little burger, veggie burger? What you what you going? See, I know. I've been trying to maintain my trying to I, I've I've trying to try to not eat fried food as much. Yeah. So I, I like uh I'm starting to get on the deli sandwich wave. Right. So I give me like a, a croissant, turkey, cheese, bacon, and I'm contradicting myself, bacon and a little bit less. Oh yeah, you make a meal here right and, now. And some I'm Lay's. Oh, that's 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 a hit. That's, that's nice. a hit. And then dinner, what's your what's your go to after game, post post game, and oh. it just dropped thirty. Oh yeah. What you what you go what's your go to? Oh, uh, I like I like Mexican food. So I give me a nice little quesadilla, chips and queso. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's that's the game winner right there. <laughs> and then I want to talk about your personal brand. You mentioned it a little bit, maybe yeah. tell the listeners about that. Your yeah. website, social media, what's going on? Oh uh, yeah, um it's so you know how this is how I tell everybody. You know how Nike, their slogan is is just do it. Yeah. Mine is find your purpose, so it's called it's called substantial, and um, it's just it's it's not too it's real simple clothing, but it's it, it looks nice and it's great material. So I, that's what I that's what that's what a lot of people tell me is like they they appreciate the quality of it. You know, I take great pride great pride in the quality, but uh, it looks nice. And uh, the website is substantialww.com. You know, get your gear. We got hats. You know, just get your gear. You know, we're just starting off small business, but we're gonna get there. I love that. We'll put the link. We'll put the link there, and it's yeah. great, it's great to see NBA guys oh, yeah. capitalize on your success exactly. here. You know, exactly. uh, looking forward to it. Thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate you, bro. All right, everybody, I'm Sam Pasco with Don's Insiders, and I'm joined by Clippers guard Tremaine Isabel. Tremaine, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, I appreciate it. I want to first kind of start with your basketball origins. <clears throat> How did you get into the game, kind of your high school career, and a little bit of college? Uh, I started playing when I was four years old. Uh, I just started. My dad and my mom introduced me to Little Tykes basketball, hoop, and uh, I've been playing ever since. Nice. And how would you describe your style of game for those who haven't seen you play a lot? Uh, my style of game is uh, play a little bit like a mixture of like Tony Parker, Kyrie Irving. I'm just a creative guard that can get in the lane. Uh, I can score, but I can also f- facilitate. And I kind of want to transition into the summer league, the reason we're here in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you describe professional basketball? Is it a lot different than college college hoops? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot different. Uh, it's almost one of those things. It's a it's a more wide open game, but you also have to be a lot more uh, focused on what you're doing and, and why you're doing it. You can't just be uh, so excited that there's so much open court that you start doing too much. You still have to be very, uh, you know, uh, you have to have a game plan as to how you're going to attack the defense. Mm-hmm. And we were here um, at your hotel getting ready to go off to the day. What's your what's an average day like for you here? Average day is we wake up, uh, you, you go to the training room, you get uh, you get a massage, you get you get breakfast, and then uh, you go watch film. After film, we have shoot around. After shoot around, we come back to the hotel, and uh, probably gonna watch film again, and then uh, we will get ready for the game. How how is the breakfast here? What is it? What do you have this morning? Uh, I haven't had breakfast yet. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a pa- I'm a pancakes and eggs and bacon kind of guy. I pretty much have that uh, almost every day. Nice, nice. Um, one last kind of summer league kind of question is: How do you? What's it like adjusting to all new teammates and players? Is there is there an adjustment period? Oh uh, yeah, there's definitely an adjustment period, but it's a lot different than college because uh, these guys are professionals, you know. So everyone has a high basketball IQ. Everyone is uh, extremely talented. So I don't feel like it takes nearly as long as it as it does on uh, on a college you know, in college because you know you're mixing fifth year guys with mm-hmm. with freshman guys and uh, the, the difference from high school to college is I feel like it's so much more uh, extreme than the difference from college to pros. Mm-hmm. And just kind of wrap up here, we have some personal interest questions here. What's your go-to shoe, both on and off the court? Um, my go-to shoe on the court, my favorite shoe on the court is uh, Kobe's. Okay. 
I'm a Kobe guy, it's, uh, low top and uh, very comfortable. Uh, and then off the court, uh, I'm going with my uh, Alexander McQueen's. <laughs> And who's your favorite musical artist? What's your t- what type of music do you like to listen to? Uh, I listen to a lot of different music, but right now I'm listening to a lot of uh, Baby Smooth and uh, Juice the God. Nice. Yeah. And last one here, what's your favorite TV show and or movie? What's your- My favorite TV show is Curb Enthusiasm. Hey, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. And The Sopranos. And uh, my favorite movie is uh, Superbad. Fucking calm down, Greg. It's soccer. It's soccer. And uh, I have to go with uh, this one, another favorite movie of mine. Uh, yeah, let's go super bad. Hi. Who is that guy? Who's this guy? Hey, fellas. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Everyone. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, thanks for Tremaine for uh, joining us here, and good luck with your basketball career. Yeah, How's it going, everyone? Teddy Solomon here with Don's Insiders, and I'm joined by Tremaine Isabel. Tremaine, thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, in this part two of our exclusive interview here, we're going to be talking about uh, Tremaine's college career. Uh, Tremaine, you played at Missouri, Drexel, uh, and also St. Louis. When you were originally committing to Missouri, what was it about the school that attracted you? Oh, what attracted me was uh, there's a new coach that Frank Haith had just left, and uh, they were telling me we were going to be like, a really good team, we are going to be young, but we are going to be an exciting team. And, uh, uh, I went on my visit, and uh, being from Seattle, I had never seen a school that n- looked anything like uh, an SEC school like Mizzou. You know, huge football stadium, bunch of you know, it, it was just very uh, attractive to me. So. Yeah, so then you transferred from there from a high major school to Drexel in Philadelphia in the inner city there, and uh, you ended up just having a breakout season. I think you went from six points a game to 21 points a game. Uh, what was it about the community or the environment at Drexel that really allowed you to thrive? Uh, what allowed me to thrive was just uh, my redshirt year. After my redshirt year, during my redshirt year, I just got to train a lot. I got to uh, really watch the college game, uh, watch a ton of guys that I grew up with play while I was, you know, obviously redshirting. And uh, I think just that chip on your shoulder uh, is worth so much more than, uh, is it worth just as much as being able to train mm-hmm. uh, an entire year. It's just, uh, just having that uh, that want to like get back out there and prove yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you got to utilize your grad transfer uh, ability to not be out a year, and uh, you went over to St. Louis. Did you expect to be able to be as successful there as you were as a team? Did you expect to go to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, we definitely expected it. Uh, I'd say we kind of underachieved in a few ways. I think it took a lot, a long time for us to click. It took for a longer, a long time for us to gel. Uh, we dealt with tr- guys transferring. We dealt with guys, uh, you know, getting dismissed. Uh, we dealt with injuries. I mean, uh, I was injured for the first half of the season, uh, but uh, you know, we, ne- we never complained, and we never. All we did was adjust. And Coach Ford told us to only focus on what we could control. And once things started clicking, uh, no one wanted to play us. And uh, and we ended up in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and then you got to play Virginia Tech in the NCAA tournament. You lost that one, but you were able to put up double-digit points. We were there in San Jose. We saw it happen, and you guys were a very impressive team coming off of a very impressive conference tournament. What was that experience like in San Jose? Uh, it, was real, it was a very cool experience. The, the atmosphere is uh, second to none. Uh, you know, obviously, it didn't end the way we wanted it to end. But, uh, you know, you got you to... I'm thankful for the experience for sure. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't get to play the NCAA tournament. It's something you dream about. Uh, and yeah, there's not much more I can say about it other than like I wish we won the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a very cool experience. And then lastly, you uh, you're from Seattle. You said that you know Khalil Shabazz and Trey Anderson, two guys who are who are on USF. Khalil just having been in his redshirt season. And USF is looking for a guard that can really replace the leadership role of Frankie Ferrari, and a lot of fans think Khalil can do that. What can you say about Khalil's ability and what you think he'll be able to give to USF? Uh, yeah, I think Khalil, yeah, I've known Khalil you know, his whole life. Uh, very good friends, family friends. And uh, no, I have a lot of confidence in Khalil and what he'll be able to bring to the table. Uh, talk about that chip on your shoulder. He came, he's coming from a D2 school. 
uh, you know, very under, very under recruited out of high school. So, you know, now that he has the opportunity to prove himself on a D1 platform, I'm sure he's going to take full advantage of it. Uh, he's very quick, pesty on defense, uh, and he's going to, the, uh, the Don fans uh, will realize that he's going to play hard every single game. And uh, I think he's the type of guy that the fans will fall in love with. Great. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm Teddy Solomon with Don's Insiders alongside Tremaine Isabel. All right, everybody, I'm Sam Pasco of oh, Don's Insiders, and I'm joined by Robert Carter Jr., the Clippers forward. Robert, thanks for joining us. Thank you, man, for having me. I want to first start at the beginning, your basketball origins. Mm -hmm. How do you first get into, fall in love with the game of basketball? Um, I started around three. My father gave me my first basketball, and I loved it ever since. Just always worked hard at it, and got me the way I am today. Mm -hmm. And your high school career, did you just dominate? Like you're in the you're in the NBA now. How good were you in high school? Uh, I think I was pretty good. I was one of the top players in the country, um, top 25 players in the country. Uh, just worked hard, man, and dominated. Got um, God blessed me with size and the gift to be able to play basketball. And I just try to use use it to my best ability, mm -hmm. and I did well. And then your college career, you, you were at Maryland for most of it. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? What was that college experience like? Uh, Maryland was amazing, man. The fans there are great. The school is great, man. I enjoy every bit of it. Um, we were one of the best teams in the country, and the fans was, was always sold out. It was a great environment to play in. Mm -hmm. uh, for someone that hasn't seen you play, how would you describe your, your style? Uh, I'm a four-man that uh, play inside and out. Uh, I just usually take advantage of mismatches and, and try to punish them. Mm -hmm. And we're, the reason we're here in Vegas, beautiful Las Vegas, for mm -hmm. NBA Summer League here. Mm -hmm. How's your? How have you been enjoying Vegas so far? Uh, Vegas is nice, man. It's, it's a dope place. A lot of teams are out here. Well, all the teams yeah. are out here. And um, you just come out here, you compete for about ten days and try to win a championship with uh, with some guys, and and it's fun. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an inside look, our listeners, kind of what? What's an average day like for you? Are you watching a lot of film? Are you with the team a lot? What's that like? Um, a little bit of both. Um, uh, we play pretty much uh, every other day or sometimes back to back. And you practice on the days you're not playing. and uh, It's nothing too crazy, but it's a lot of games in a short period of time. So we definitely rest and do a lot of studying for the, um, the next game. <laughs> and what's your approach in these games? Are you really trying to stand out and trying to impress a lot of scouts or just or try to more focus on just what you know it works for you? Yeah, you try to stay within yourself. You don't want to do too much. You just want to play the right way and um, let your work take over. Of course, you want to stand out, but I feel like you stand out by doing the things that the teams ask you to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you just execute and make shots and play your game. Mm -hmm. And you've had some experience overseas and play play to college. What's it like adjusting to new players and new teammates? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's always an adjustment. Uh, I feel like it's more off the court, just getting to know guys, and then on, and then on the court is basketball. So um, just figuring out people's game, mm -hmm. uh, understand what people do really well, and then things that they don't do so well so you always put them in the best position to help your teammates succeed <laughs> and now kind of finish up some personal interest questions here uh what's your go-to shoe on the court on the shoe well i'm an Under Armour guy uh i've been wearing Under since i was like a uh, ninth grade huh. um then i went to maryland which is the number one Under school yeah got, got the start on number went there and then as a pro 
they've been continuing to look out for me, so I always wear a number basketball shoes on the court. Right. How about off the court? What do you like to wear? Uh, off the court, uh, I'm a basketball guy, so Jordan is my favorite player ever, so I wear a lot of Jordans. and um, Jordan 1s ones. Ones are my favorite. <laughs> And then um, some designer shoes. I like design. I like. I love, I love shoes. So I got mm. plenty of shoes. Closets and closets full <laughs> of shoes. Um, too many that my mother say, and my friends say. So, but I, I keep on them. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us your boldest pair of shoes? What's like the most ambitious? The color scheme or high top? What's like oh, the like, craziest one you have? I'm all about the highlighter, the, the standing out pair of shoes, especially on the court. Uh, Lately in the games, I've been wearing all red, like highlighter shoe. Uh, today, I'm gonna pull out some purple and and like pink, oh, pinkish. It's like peaches, peachy, peachy uh, shoe. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, I stay wearing a new pair of shoe almost every game. <laughs> That's just my thing. Nice. Um, and also, who is your favorite musical artist? What type of music do you like to listen to? Uh, my favorite musical artist, uh, of course, I like hip hop, R and B things like that um i'm from the country so i have listened to country music before but that's <laughs> not my favorite uh but i would say my favorite favorite artist right now would probably be like drake of course mm -hmm. and then this girl named uh six she's a new artist oh she's a new rb artist nice. and then last one here um breakfast food are you a pancakes or waffles guy or uh, do you have a different or waffles. French waffles waffles yeah Waffles right. for sure. We have a Waffle House down south that I have to stay away from. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll turn it over to Teddy and write, uh, write a bit. Thank you, Robert. How's it going, everyone? Teddy Solomon here with Don's Insiders here for part two of our interview. I'm here uh, I'm here with Robert Carter Jr. Thanks for talking to us. I'm um, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So we're going to be talking about uh, college experience and uh, your playing path. So you started out at Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, of course, a great academic school mm -hmm. and uh, ACC team. Uh, what drew you to that school, though? Uh, staying home. Uh, I wanted to, I'm from Georgia, staying close, close to the home. Uh, my family, I love my family. It was just, it was a, at the time, I felt like it was a good fit for me. Definitely. And what can you say about uh, the value of being at a high major program? You played at two of them, uh, being really at center stage and having the opportunity to prove yourself. Oh, it's fun, man. It's amazing. Playing in front of some of the toughest crowds in, in America and the ACC and Big Ten. And uh, just enjoying, enjoying the moment, uh, going out there competing against arguably some of the, arguably the best players in the country. Uh, so you just have to take on the challenge and enjoy it. You um, grow up thinking about those type of moments and you just enjoy them. Definitely. And for those of you guys who don't know, uh, you transferred to Maryland. And Maryland, obviously, a fantastic Big Ten program, making the tournament very consistently. Uh, what was it? What was the appeal there? Um, Maryland, um, it was just when I, when I went up there, I just fell in love with the, with the, with the school, the people, uh, the players. Um, and it just drew me there somewhere I felt like I just wanted to be and then uh, it was an amazing experience once I was there. I enjoyed every bit of it. And are some of your greatest moments in life playing in the NCAA tournament? Is that really a basketball player's dream in the U.S.? Um, yeah, some players' dreams of playing in NCAA. It was, it was it was a great experience, man. I enjoyed it. Everybody's watching. Everybody's like trying to make their brackets and so everybody mm -hmm. don't want you to bust their brackets mm -hmm. and things like that. So it was definitely a good run for us and I enjoyed it for sure. And we've been talking a lot with four-year college guys, guys who don't go out early and play professionally. Uh, what can you say about the value of graduating college, uh, getting the education, and getting four years out there on the court? Uh, I mean, it depends on who you are. I mean, where you are as far as your pro status is. Um, of course, the education is, is great. You know, education is key. You can always use that no matter no matter what happens with basketball. So I would always encourage whether you leave after one year or if you graduate, they stay until you graduate, to always go back and get your degree because you can always use it in life. Definitely, and you've had some experience overseas playing. Yeah. Uh, what has that been like and how does that compare to college play? Um, it's different. It's, it's closer to college than I would say the NBA is. Uh, the rules are similar. Um, guys are able to stay in the lane. Guys are able to load up on you a little bit more. Where NBA is more space, uh, but it's it's a di it's a different experience. Uh, something you definitely have to be prepared for. Just living in different cultures, different countries, and 
different things like that. But any opportunity you have to go make money playing basketball, it's a blessing. Definitely. So thanks for, so much for talking to us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, Teddy Solomon here with Don's Insiders, uh, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Antonius Cleveland, uh, who's playing in the NBA Summer League for the Mavericks. Uh, thanks for joining us today. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about your college career in this part one of the interview uh, and high school career. So you went to Southeast Missouri State, uh, and that's in the OVC, obviously. The OVC has been on the rise recently, but what was your time like at the school? Did you really enjoy it there? Did it do a lot for your uh, basketball career? Um, yeah, definitely. I kind of went in not knowing what to expect, but, you know, I, got, I started as a freshman all four years and just got better and better, and um, I enjoyed my time. It was close to home, and um, I was around, you know, pretty good people. Mm -hmm. And in the recent years, really this year, the OVC has been on the rise, being a two-bid league, uh, and also Jacksonville State is very good. Uh, but Murray State and Belmont, what has that been like to see the OVC on the rise? Uh, is the conference near and dear to you? Um, definitely. I definitely try to follow it, you know, with me still supporting CMO and uh, Murray State always has, you know, a stud in Belmont as well. So I do follow the tournament and um, it's just um, I'm happy to be happy to be like an alumni of their conference. You know, they had two players to go in the first round and I just think it's on the rise, man. And it's definitely talent. I don't know in OVC, but in a lot of other mid-majors as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we were talking about that earlier. If, do you have an opinion on whether you think playing at a mid-major and really standing out or kind of being in the background at a high major, which one do you think is better in terms of trying to seek a professional career? Um, well, I think it just all depends on like what happens in your life, I guess. But if, if you had to choose, I think the situation, I, I'll say don't not go to a mid-major just because it's a mid-major and you want to go be behind someone else at a, a high major. So I'll just say, man, if you got talent, they'll find you anywhere. That's just my advice. Definitely. Uh, and back in high school, going a little bit earlier, were you a really dominant player uh, in high school, uh, or did you see some stiff competition like what you saw in high school, in I, college? Not at all, man. In high school, I was kind of short, and um, I was like a, a bench player. I didn't hit, I hit a growth spurt my senior year, and that's when I started starting and started uh, playing better and getting accolades and stuff like that. But I really was kind of like a, I wouldn't say a no name, but I wasn't ranked anything like that in high school. Okay, and for people who don't know you as a player, what kind of player are you? What kind of uh, player will we see on the court if we see you out there in summer league? I'm a player that's going to play hard. It's going to play the fan, play the game the right way. And um, just, uh, I believe I'm fun to watch and transition. You know, I might do something to get you out of your seat or, or do something to catch you off guard, man. I just feel like I can, there's no telling what I could do in, in transition. Definitely, and you're one of the four-year guys in college. How valuable was it to get that education and also be able to play? It was, man, because um, a lot of people, you know, one and done, two years and done, and 10 years later, they still want to get that degree. So just knowing that I already knocked that out, uh, made my mom proud, and I only proved to myself that I could, you know, do anything. It's just good to know I got that degree in my back pocket. Definitely. Well, Antonius, thanks so much for joining us. I'll pass you over to Sam for part two, where you guys will talk a little personal interest in Summer League. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Teddy. Got to say again, thank you, Antonius, for doing this with us. Um, it's such an honor to be here with you talking a little personal interest right now. I want to first start off with your shoes. What's your go-to shoe on the court? On the court right now, I'm rocking the Kobe's. Um, I'm, I'm usually a Paul George guy, but the new Kobe's came out, and, and they feel pretty good. And off court, what do you like to wear after the game? Um, off the court, I got a little variety. I, I like to go with some, you know, Nikes for the most part, some retro Jordans, and uh, maybe some Yeezys. You, you could catch me in some Yeezys yeah. as well. And uh, music, you know, pump you up. What do you like to listen to? 
Uh, it just depends, man. I'm an R&B kind of guy. But before a game, I want to like listen to some hip hop or some, you know, my my ritual songs or whatever. But uh, I'm all over the place when it comes to music. Yeah. I'd say you have you have a free little evening. You want to watch some TV, a little Netflix. Uh-huh. You a Stranger Things fan? Definitely Stranger Things. Definitely. You ready for season three? I've been watching it. I got a. I got like. I think I'm on episode three. I got a, a little ways to go, but I'm excited knowing that I have episodes left to watch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and favorite movie along those same lines? I probably say um, either. I got like a few. Probably The Wood, Six Man, or Life. All right. Y'all should check those out if you haven't seen them. Classic. Check those out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and food. Transition to that. Breakfast. What do you? What do you, What's your go-to breakfast? Sausage, turkey, eggs? turkey bacon. <laughs> Interesting. Turkey bacon. Staying healthy with Staying it. Staying healthy. There trying to. And uh, I'm pancakes. Not a waffle guy, but okay. pancakes. Interesting. We've had some waffle guys in the past. Pancakes. Okay. Great pancakes, to see pancakes, them. Yeah. You like the fluffiness? You know, like an IHOP? I like type? it when it's kind of like crunchy around the edges. Okay. But still, you know, tasty. But it's just a little bit of syrup. You shouldn't need too much syrup mm-hmm. for a good pancake, you know? And now, lunchtime, what are you going? You go a burger? Or maybe a veggie burger, turkey burger? Or more like a pizza pasta? Uh, for lunch, I, I can eat a burger. I'm a wings guy, chicken wings oh, guy. Yeah. I love chicken wings. A wing stop or Buffalo Wild Wings? Uh, neither. I'm more of a find that local, local spot. Interesting. Local, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wing spot. Have you found anyone here in uh, here in nah, Vegas? I haven't. I haven't really looked, but I had some wings from um, Room Service, and they were okay. Oh, not bad. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Um, and dinner post game after great game, you dress. You just dropped thirty. Mm-hmm. What you go? What you? What are you gonna eat? Uh, first of all, I'm gonna eat whatever. It's, if it's something given to us and it's free, then it's okay. Vegas. That's my go-to. Vegas. But if not, uh, just depends on what city I'm in. But I'll probably go with some pasta or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And we are here in front of the Avengers station here. Do you have a favorite superhero? Uh, yes, yeah, Spider-Man. Huh? Tobey Maguire, though. Re- okay, I was gonna say not Andrew Garfield or Tom Holland. I just grew up on um, Guar, but I do like Holland. He's more of the younger, innocent yes. high mm-hmm. schooler, so I did enjoy the newest one. But he got, got it far from home. You enjoy that? Far from home, yeah. I enjoy we that. Need, I need another classic because McGuire gave us three, so yeah. I need another classic. Mm-hmm. And uh, technology wise, Snapchat, Instagram, or Twitter? What's your social media platform? Uh, Twitter, man. I think Twitter just keeps you updated on life. You, know, you can find out what's going on from Twitter. So I think Twitter is the more, more convenient out of, out of all of them. And a video game. You two, you a two K fan? Definitely a two K right. fan. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite team to play on? I mean, Mavericks. You gonna uh, play with yourself? I do play with myself sometimes, but he's not as good. So, uh, but I play with anyone. <laughs> I play with anyone. Um, and we have your what's your what's your kind of like favorite beverage? You got a favorite like lemonade, Starbucks? I like lemonade. 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 He's eliminated water. I'm trying to you know refrain from yeah. the, from soda. I like stunning, I like shining, I like million dollar deals, where's my pen? Bitch, I'm signing. I like those Balenciagas, the ones that look like socks. I like going to the Tula, I put rocks all in my watch. I like sexes from my exes when they want a second chance. I like proving... How's it going, everyone? Teddy Solomon here with Don's Insiders, and I'm joined by a very special guest. Uh, he's a USD alum, a WCC alum, and a 3X3U alum. I'm joined by Isaiah Pinheiro. Thanks, Isaiah, for coming. Yeah, of course. No problem. So we're going to be talking with Isaiah about his college career, about 3X3U, which we've been talking about with some other guys as well. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the NBA Summer League, where we are right now in Las Vegas. So Isaiah, you started out at junior college. You then went to Portland State. You then went to USD. Did you ever think at any point that this would be a possibility, being on the biggest stage really at the NBA Summer League? Yeah. Um, I mean, to start my career, no. Um, you know, I was just trying to get a college education um, and play basketball. And then... Um, each step of the way, you know, uh, I worked harder and I was getting better. And so then by the time I got to San Diego, NBA was, you know, my goal. And so um, it became a reality and, um, you know, knocking on the doorstep of it. And so it feels great. And can you tell us about how USD, how the coaching staff or the environment there really got you to the point where you are today? Yeah, you know, they um, they really got on me about just hard work, you know, staying in the gym, um, if I wanted to be a better player that I had to work hard and they helped me with my leadership skills and just my overall basketball IQ Um, and 
I think after going there, I'm a tremendously better player. And Coach Sam Scholl, he seemed really passionate, especially when we came to USF. He was really emotional the whole game. Do you think that's a trait that made him a great coach? Yeah, definitely. You know, he um, he really, truly cares about his players, and he loves them, and he just wants to see them succeed um, on the court and off the court. And so it's definitely a quality that's going to make him a great coach. And what would you say your highlight season and highlight moment were at San Diego? Mm -hmm. um, definitely this uh, – this last season, you know, from when I transferred in, uh, you know, the team, I think, only won nine games. And then to this year, I think we won 22. And we got an at-large bid to the NIT. And so um, it just shows what hard work and coming together as a team can do. Yeah, and I want to talk a little bit about 3x3U. You joined your teammate Olin Carter, also uh, Roberto Gallinat and Frankie Ferrari, uh, and you guys made the finals. What was that experience like for you, and how has that transformed your playing style in any way, or was it just a fun experience? Um, no, it was a great experience. You know, it was great to play with Olin one more time and then to get together with Frankie and uh, Birdie, but the whole experience that 3x3U is – I feel like it's going to blow up. It was a great experience. They had it in the mall. The setup was awesome. Um, and it was just a really fun overall experience. Definitely. And there are 26 3x3U alums in this. Uh, and I think most of them seem to be on the Jazz. There seem to be like seven <laughs> on the Jazz. But uh, what has it been like being here with all those 3x3U alums? Do you guys know each other? Do you guys recognize that you guys were all in that tournament? Yeah, you know, um, it's a small everything after college is a small kind of community and so we see each other you know we give each other say what's up to everyone um but it's it's great because now you know more people in the basketball community yeah and last question being able to represent the, the wcc other than gonzaga we'll leave gonzaga out of it <laughs> very few players there's eric mika you frankie ferrari that's all i can really think of off the top of my head here mm -hmm. how meaningful is that to you oh uh, it's great you know um i think it's just it's a blessing to be here in the first place and then to come from a mid-major conference like the WCC, it's, um, I take great pride in representing them. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for talking to us. We'll pass you over to Sam for some quick personal interest uh, questions and then get you on your way. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Sam Pasco with uh, Dawn's Insiders here. Thanks, Teddy, for uh, swinging us over. I'm outside Thomas and Mack Center in Cox Pavilion here with Isaiah Pinheiro. Isaiah, thanks for joining us yeah, here. No problem. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Isaiah played with uh, University of San Diego against our Dons. Uh, I gotta say, the purple looks good on you. <laughs> it, it's great to see you now, not, you. Uh, not against uh, us at War Memorial. Thank um, you. First off, how have you been enjoying Vegas? How, how has Vegas been treating it's you? It's been good great. Shows? It's a, nah, you know, it's been a grind here, so not many days off. Um, and it's a lot of resting and staying in the gym, so mm -hmm. staying out of the heat. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get right into it, some personal interest questions. What's your go-to shoe on the court? We've had some Nike, some Kobe guys. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably say Jordan 11s. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. And then off the court, what do you like to wear? Oof. Uh, anything Nike, really. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then music, you got to get pumped up for a game. Uh -huh. What are you listening to? Uh, man, it depends. Uh, it depends what mood I'm in going into the pregame, but a lot of Drake, J. Cole, um, who else? Mostly those guys. Mm -hmm. Mostly Drake and J. Cole. And Old Town Road, you got to get your opinion on it. It's very, it's trending right now. Yeah. It, it, it's bopping right now. Yeah. No, um, I don't think I'll play it, but if it's on, I won't skip it. All right. All right. Yeah. A, little, a, little Billy, a little Billy Ray Cyrus Yeah, there. yeah. Um, and then favorite TV show? Uh, gotta go with Friends. Friends. Do you have a favorite friend? Oh, man. Uh, I know, it's a tough one. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ross. Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah he's hilarious. Yeah. Not Gunther? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. He's down that list. Okay. Get out. I'm, I'm a Chandler guy myself. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, uh, food, breakfast, what's your, your pancakes or waffles? Ooh, I'll go with waffles. All right. Uh, lunch, burgers or pizza? Ooh, I'll go with pizza. And dinner, we'll keep this open. After a game, what, what's your uh, oh, dinner option? Oh, man. Uh, let's go with pasta. Pasta? Yeah. Um, superhero movie, what's your Marvel, DC, are you, what are you, are you, what are you a fan of? Big Marvel fan, big Marvel fan. Are you a Spider-Man, Iron Man, Hulk, who's your, who's your ah, hero? Okay. I love the new Spider-Man, but I probably got to go with Iron Man. Have you seen the new Spider-Man Far yes. From Home? 
What oh, you, no, not, not the new not, one. Not the new one. No, not the new one. I want to see it. Probably going to see it tomorrow. I recommend it. Yeah, yeah it's so. good? It's good. Okay, okay. Um, Snapchat, Twitter, or Instagram for social media? Ooh. I'll go with Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Uh, favorite video game, old or new? Oh, favorite? Um, I'll go with Apex right now. Apex? Right. Yeah. And then coffee. You want to go a little coffee run? What are you going to, Starbucks or Pete's? Starbucks, Starbucks. definitely. All right, that's been Isaiah Pinera. Thanks so much for joining yeah, us out no here. Problem. Thank you. Now there was a time.